There's a good citizen in Sherwood, Arkansas, not far from me, a random patriot, if you will, who is tired of police in Sherwood abusing their power. This citizen is a proud military vet who wishes to remain anonymous at this time. He doesn't have a channel of his own, so he reached out to me and agreed to let me share some of his encounters. There is a lot to cover in due time, but for now, I feel this phone call is a great place to start. Please show any appreciation you have for him in the comments of this video. Hello? Hello. Yes, sir. My name is Mark. And uh, you're your chief and your captain know me. And ever since I had a problem uh, back in December when I was a, uh, a victim on a road rage incident and two of your officers handled it in the situation completely wrong. One was uh, a training officer and one was a, uh, a sergeant, Captain Harper. And Captain Harper agreed that it, they were handled wrong. But ever since then, I'm sorry. I don't have respect for the, for the uh, police department. I've lived in Sherwood eight years. I've never had a problem. I've never uh, been involved in anything. Or, or stood up for people's rights until until now, after what I was what I went through in early December. And it's hard to respect people from, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what type of business it is. But uh, to make a long story short, I've met with Captain Harper, I met with the police chief. You know, I'm not gonna have the police department as a taxpayer ignore my calls and my complaints just because I speak up, okay? You violate the law, whether you're a citizen or a police officer, you pay the price. And I made a complaint a little over a week ago, Lieutenant, to a, uh, one of your sergeants, McNeil, a unit supervisor. Okay, let me tell you something. I don't use this word like a lot of people use it, but he's a tyrant. He is an insubordination of policy and procedure for not taking my complaint and following up on it. I guarantee you he ignored it. I witnessed, just driving in Sherwood, I witnessed one of your officers make two violations. And uh, one, when I was driving towards Coles to get on the interstate on Brockington, he made a, a U-turn uh, right there at that intersection where people coming off the 67. So I followed him, and he went all the way down Brockington, all the way to 107, and then when we got to a red light, I pulled beside him and rolled down my window and asked him, why you make a, an illegal uh, U-turn? And his words were, because I can. That, that's not good enough for me, because if it was a citizen, they would get most likely get a ticket. Not a warning, a ticket, because that's dangerous. He got behind me, I was in my company vehicle, and I don't, I don't know until I forwarded a request to see if he ran my license plate, because he didn't like what I said. But I'll forward that if I have to. I got this all on video, and I don't want to show it to y'all, but if I have to, it's gonna go. It's gonna go to not just you all, but it's gonna go all over social media and the news because I'm getting tired of the lack of transparency and accountability. So once I make contact with them, after that we kept on going down 107 to Peel, and at that intersection he he, he was gonna turn left onto Peel. And uh, like I was doing, but he thought he was also again above the law and he didn't like the traffic on the turning lane. So he went to the parking lot of Sonic and got back on Kill right by the Sonic and the, the liquor store across the street. That's another violation. He uses, some of your officers use their uniform and their vehicles as power. And most of these are younger, young, the younger ones. And, you know, <laughs> they have to obey by the law just like we do. And I talked to your sergeant, McNeil, and, and 
I, I use words like I feel. The, the guy was very unprofessional. He, he, he lacked leadership, I could tell, because instead of making all the excuses and telling a citizen that, say, well, let me get back with you, let me talk to him and see why he did that, and I'll get back with you. Instead of that, he made, he made up things, uh, why, why he, he would have done that. And, and I, that's none of my concern there. He needs to listen to all the facts before he tells me, well, hypotheticals and stuff. And then he asked me, well, how was the traffic where he made that, uh, U-turn at that intersection? Lieutenant, that's irrelevant. That's irrelevant. It all, it all takes one vehicle to, to hit somebody, and we're you're not above the law. Where you're saying he'd done this U-turn at? You're saying it was on Brockington up there, close to where the flyover comes off the freeway? Where, where, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir, right where, uh, where the fire uh, people sometimes do their right behind coals, you know, that new, the new... Uh, the new street that they put in yeah. about two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right there at that intersection. Right okay. there. Okay. That's you what know, I was, and but, what I thought you said. I but, just make sure I was right. Yeah. But McNeil never followed up with me at all. And, uh, you, you know, know, you know, know I'm all... the number that was, by chance? Yeah, 19-46. I believe a young, a young officer with, uh, with a beard. But he said, he said to me, because I can. Now, Lieutenant, I, I'm ex-military, and it, it, that's irrelevant too, though. But let me tell you something. You know, you don't get a good image when when you say because I can, and McNeil, uh, you know, ignored me, never called me back, never did did anything. You know, I'm not here to get ignored. I'm a taxpayer, and like I said, I've lived here over, right at eight years now until last December. Until I had a, a a problem with one of your training officers, Nance, and then another uh, saw when he wanted when he refused to get his, uh, his ball, uh, supervisor out to the scene when I asked for one, he said I'm not going to, and and that's another problem. But that's a, a, a above you where you guys don't have it in writing as a policy or procedure, and uh, until until you guys have that, Lieutenant. Uh, you're not going to have no transparency or accountability if he uses his authority wearing that uniform, the reason why he wasn't going to get a uh, supervisor. And then when a supervisor, I did call one up and he came to my house. You know, it started off good, it ended horrible because the way he, he acted and, and you know, Captain Harper uh, agreed with me on both, on both cases. You know, I got a lot of street smarts and book smarts and knowledge of, of laws and all that. I'm no First or Fourth Amendment auditor or anything, but I just res respect other people, but they have to give it also. And and be honest, I, I don't like your boss, you know, your chief. I think he should be gone, but that's irrelevant also. But, I, but I'm cordial and I was challenged on who has uh, that policy and procedure in writing about about uh, getting uh, a supervisor if someone asked for. Uh, and I told him about 95 departments uh, this size and above in the country. And he says, well, find me one. It took me two miles away in North Little Rock to find one in writing. You know? Let me get your call back. Especially, up. okay, one other thing. Especially, since you guys don't have no tracking system, or cameras in your vehicles, you know. Until that happens, you know, you probably agree there, and, uh, and and that's where I back you guys. I feel that that should be done immediately. I don't care where you get that money from, but uh, cameras should be in that vehicle immediately these days. And usually they're done before uh, a body cameras, but I guess in Sherwood it's not. But anyway, my phone number is five zero one. And Lieutenant, I'm pro police all the way, sir. I'm pro police all the way, and and and, and support being in the military and, and and stuff. I'm, but 
the transparency and accountability it's like any other business. Let me look into this okay. and uh, either me or you know, McNeil or somebody get back with you. And, uh, you know, sure. And I, I greatly this, appreciate your time incident, listening. When did this incident happen? I believe, I, I got a look, I believe it was last Monday or Tuesday around 12, 1230. All right. I know that for sure. Well, somebody will get back with you. And, uh, okay, and like I said, I appreciate your time and speaking with me. All right. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Hello? Is Mr. Yes. Hey, Lieutenant Elvis, return your call. Yes. Getting back with you. Yeah. Uh, I've spoken with the officer who you observed doing the U-turn and driving through Sonic. And I also spoke with McNeil. And contrary to your belief, in a marked police car, we can do U-turns. And I mean, if we have reason, reason, we can't just be out there doing it. But if we have reason that we need to be somewhere, uh, the officer was looking for somebody or a vehicle whenever he'd done that U-turn. And that's pretty much common practice in the police world. And uh, that's not, hey, hey, Lieutenant Alvis, that's not true. Let me tell you why it, I say that. That is true. Let me tell you why I say that. We're, we're not exempt from all the what laws. What are the lights we, for? What are the lights for? Because we drive an emergency vehicle, that's what you're for. You got, I mean, you got to I mean everything, everything's not a total emergency. I mean, okay, I'm not... On that day, I want I want a FOIA request for for the, those three hours that I that I that he knows the dates. I want to I want to see see that, and I want to see if he ran my tags. Because now I don't like lies, Lieutenant. What what's the lie? Because, I mean, what, what lie? Well, what, 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 a stranded pedestrian. That's what he told me. What are the lights for, though? I mean, let me tell you something. I want, I want to tell you something, and listen, just listen to me. I'm listening. Lieutenant, you want to back him? Back him. But you're not going to get respect from me. You're not going to get respect from others. And then you're, and you're saying on Sonic, by Sonic, the same thing, huh? Four or five miles away. So he drove through a parking lot, and that's, that's against the law? Yeah, that's against the law. Hey, if I'm under, if I'm coming at four thirty, five o'clock from North Little Rock on one oh seven, I cut through Shell to get on to Keel to avoid the to go to the light. Yes. That's against the law. That, you're right. That that's a violation. That and if you guys want to continue to break those kind of laws, I will continue and I'll bring in first and fourth amendment auditors. You guys okay. do it that's your fine. way, the good old system. It ain't got anything to do with the good old system. It we, is. Can, we can also <laughs> text and drive. It says so in the law. There's certain uh, things that we can do that the general public cannot do. But you don't abuse that power. We're not abusing the power. You're abusing the power. A pedestrian and making a U-turn, is that right? Is that right? Let me ask you something. Is that right? That's not an emergency, a stranded pedestrian. Now, if someone's a pedestrian walking down the road is having a heart attack, it is. I mean, who are you to determine what's an emergency? And also, what I don't know what the call was, but whatever the call is. Oh, okay. You want, to, you want to protect it. You guys, you guys want to protect your own, and you don't want to say you're wrong. Then you're not bringing anything up, uh, Lieutenant, about my call with him and him never getting back with me. If I didn't call you at all, nothing would have been done. So you guys he, do it your own me, way. He you guys told don't me do the it. last words that you said to him was, was you, you want to do that? You want to call from Captain Harper. And from what I understand, you and Captain Harper have spoke since then. So he didn't know he was supposed to get back in touch with you. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 he, he was. Ca Captain, Harper. Captain Harper was? Yeah, he said he had to go and he'll call me back. But if you guys want to play those games and, and have respect... We'll, we'll, we'll do we'll do that we'll, we'll do that I'll play those games 
it ain't got nothing to do with know, games. I'm, I'm going to do, do it. I'm going to do it. Law, you need to study the law before you tell us what laws were breaking because we know what we're doing. Those can't laws do. are broken. Those laws were broken. They're, they're not broken. Okay, then did he, now let me ask you a question. Did you look at Did you look at the radio call for a pedestrian? No, send that to me. No, I, I, send I that to me. Then he didn't do nothing. I, You're, I a I too. To. You're a tyrant too. You're a tyrant too. Why don't you? I'm a tyrant if you say too. He, <laughs> hey, if he said, Why don't you come up here and say that to my face? Why don't you come up here and say that to my face? Say that to your face, I will. Where are you? Well. Where are you? I'll say it to your damn face. I'm here at the police department. Okay, I'll say it to your face. I don't I don't know what you're trying to accomplish here. I'll say it to your face. Is that a threat? No, it's not a threat. a threat. It's not a threat. Yeah, it is a threat. We'll not see that. You at all. We'll say that right now. Oh yeah. You got the tape recorded right now? Say it to your face. 